acid catalyzed dehydration. It goes through an E1 mechanism, which is unimolecular. To cause acid catalyzed dehydration, we'll treat an alcohol with concentrated acid. That's what the brackets here around the H2SO4 mean. Concentrated sulfuric acid. You might also use concentrated phosphoric acid. Let's go through the mechanism. So this is going to go E1, which means we have to have loss of a leaving group followed by proton transfer. However, hydroxide is a terrible leaving group, so we need to do a proton transfer first to turn it into water. Now, even though our reagent is concentrated sulfuric acid, there is enough hydronium or enough water present to mean that hydronium is going to be the actual molecule that supplies the proton. So here is our first step. Two curved arrows for proton transfer. We now have a good leaving group in this water, so loss of a leaving group can be our second step. This produces a carbocation and a water molecule. I should also say that we produced a water molecule in the first step. That's the conjugate base of the hydronium. The water molecule can then act as a base to take a beta proton. which gives us our final product. In this case, propylene. Now, you may be saying, hold on, Depperman. This is only going to make a secondary carbocation, not stable enough for loss of a leaving group to happen. But actually, the concentrated sulfuric acid is so hygroscopic, that means it wants to suck water out of this molecule so badly that this just happens, despite the fact that we've only got a secondary carbocation. So this is really good for making simple alkenes, propylene, or this one, starting from t-butanol, reacting with concentrated acid and heat. In this case, I use concentrated phosphoric, but works just the same. And we get 2-methylpropene, this is fine for E1. Proton transfer to make the protonated alcohol first, followed by loss of a leaving group. To give us the carbocation, which a water then deprotonates. to give our final simple alkene. Because we make a carbocation though, you need to be careful when you're using acid catalyzed dehydration. For instance, seeing this, you might think to yourself, all right, this is gonna go E1 and there's no proton on this beta carbon, so we'll have to take this one and therefore we'll end up with this alkene. But if you look into the mechanism, you'll see this is not actually the case. The first step will be proton transfer. And we get this protonated alcohol. And we can now do loss of a leaving group. That'll make a secondary carbocation. Shouldn't be a problem, but we have a nearby methyl group that can do a 1,2 methide shift to give us a tertiary carbocation.
then water will take the most substituted beta proton and the alkene we get will be a constitutional isomer of what we thought. These two are not the same. The bottom line, beware of rearrangement in unimolecular reactions, both E1 and SN1.